Arriving in Haiti was a huge culture shock, I must say. I mean, as soon as you get off the airplane, you know automatically you're in a completely different part of the world, even though it's not that far from the United States. The culture shock was immediate. First, you think this place is completely out of control and it's chaotic and in reality, it's just the way things are down here. The conditions were, were shocking at first. When you see it in person, it becomes very real to you. Eye-opening. It'll change your perspective on life. definitely need some things here, but like, I can stay here longer. You need to come see this place, it's fascinating. It's life-changing. So having been down here before, I knew what to expect. Uh, the best part of these trips, the fact that I get to share this uh, experience with other people who hear about Haiti, they wonder about Haiti, they hear all the bad things about Haiti, the negative narrative. And once, once you break through the chaos and you kind of understand how things try to work down here, uh, it's, it gives you a better appreciation of, of life in Haiti. Beautiful, resilient people, uh, an amazing country with an incredible history that not many people know. Um, and I think gaining a familiarity with what, uh, what this country is all about is, is very important. The thing that I kept thinking about was like the, how this place was just simultaneously beautiful and like heartbreaking at the, at, you know, at the same time. They're able to, to cope and to make the best of the situation they're faced with. It was a bit uh, concerning to me at first, like, hey, how's everybody gonna react? And what if somebody comes down here and just on day two, I can't do this. Um, everybody powers through, and that's how the Haitian people are. Five hours of dirty road and uh, a Mad Max ambience, that would be cool. We're on the, the journey, which is this, you know, can be up to seven, eight hours, depending mountainous, treacherous, dirt road, bouncing up and down in an SUV. That's why I ask people, if you're easily carsick, you don't want to come on this trip. So it, it's super bumpy, let's see, yeah. out of the car at the top of the mountain and there's a massive market there and I'm thinking okay we're gonna get swarmed and it's gonna be uncomfortable for everyone and I turn around and Romero and Denton and JPO are like tagging the inside of a cement culvert you know making their mark there it was cool it's like hey we're here and we're, uh, we're, we're trying to be part of what's going on People gawking at us, we're behind uh, tinted windows, we're in air conditioning, yeah, the ride's bumpy. Again, you think about how uncomfortable they are. This is the tea from the flowers that she picked off the tree over there. And it's unbelievable.
Oh, um, uh, what is oh, this sure, called? Sure, sure. Tea. <laughs> <laughs> I really love the fruit. We've had great food here. Again, that speaks to the wonderful hospitality. We have had amazing fruit, fruit juice for our meals, bananas on the road. We see it growing all over the country. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Well, we're taking good care of you. <laughs> Topographically and, and you know with the ecology here and everything like that, the country's gorgeous. We visited the hospital in Port de Pay. Utterly shocking. I couldn't believe how terrible it really was. Come on, we pump the water to the hospital. Yeah. We like to get the groundwater. Does it work? Yeah, oh, it's cool. right now, but yeah. the second they went out of fuel, right. of course, the pump is the water. Right. No water but pressure. You got all this sun, you could put a solar, solar, yeah, solar yeah, system yeah. on it. And That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Thing? Yeah. That's where they burn all the. It's in the river. That's what they're uh, going to Trash and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. the waste. Oh, the waste, okay. The bed is good. They, the, all the beds are good, but they, the wheels is, yeah, it don't work. Yeah, because of the wheels. We also visited an orphanage that is affiliated with the hospital, and I think they had 76 children there. There was a lady who was taking care of them um, who had also been an orphan 30 years ago and she just stayed there and worked with all of the kids and she called them her kids. Everybody, she had seven. Mm -hmm. And now we have 76. Wow. Yeah, so some of them have got tuberculosis or malnourish and, and we have 10 and other ones to go to university. And we have uh, 50 weeks to go to school this year. So we are paying for money, we don't know. They have to go to school. We have some of them abandoned here by their families because they are very poor. They cannot come back to take them, so I cannot put them outside, you know. They are my babies. He just maybe for one week he's there. We give him food, we give him milk. And it was heartbreaking and heartwarming all at once because you see a, a baby crawling on a concrete floor whose uh, mother has died or other kids who've been abandoned because their parents don't want them or can't take care of them. Their mom died two days after they were born. Despite all that, they, they just uh, lit up. We were lifting them up with our arms and we were having a great time and you just didn't want to leave. You wanted to spend your whole trip there. I mean, it was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. The desire to help is overwhelming. These kids are dropped off like stray dogs. And a lot of those kids, uh, from what I was told, have diseases already like tuberculosis, AIDS. They didn't have the supplies they needed or the attention they needed from the doctor because he's so spread thin that their kids would have to just stay at the hospital. Their positivity was infectious. It was devastating. It was, it was unbelievable. Um, and it definitely made me care more about what we were doing here. The way they set this thing up, if you can pay like a little bit of the money is gonna, they're gonna charge you, you get a room. If you can't, the people that are there, um, they, you know, they needed a dentist, an optometrist, they needed training on so many things, they had almost no supplies. You know, because of, you know, this costs money, yeah. and the guy can't afford it. So, 
The guy here because of a motorcycle accident, but he's laying on the Don Ali Davidson motorcycle <laughs> blanket. Zero, zero to two years old. Oh man, newborn, newborn. Yeah. So this is like the NICU, I guess. Zero to two, zero to two. Yeah. Somebody have twins. <laughs> I know for some, it was their first experience seeing a hospital like that. I mean, this city has 200,000 people in it, and there's two hospitals here, and they're very small and very ill-equipped. Anesthesia? Anesthesia, yes. Yeah. Sorry, what? Anesthetic. Anesthetic. Oh, anesthetic, yeah. yeah that's the biggest problem. Yeah. Your biggest problem? Yeah. Like not having it? Shortage, not no. having it. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. The metal, yeah. 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 Like, like to stabilize. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. After that, I'm back to you. Let's see, you're not busy. So, right now, what they're working on to get somebody to specialize, specialize in other people, other people to do the surgeries. Because right now, a guy comes from Puerto Prince to doctor for 15 days, and Supposed, it's supposed to be 15 days and they send somebody else, right, for 15 days. They mm -hmm. switch. Yeah. But usually the switch doesn't happen. There's no turnover. Yes. So they just so, left? And yes. In the meantime, if a motorcycle accident, something happened, mm -hmm. this regular doctor, that guy deliver a baby, or the other guy who look for people for coal, they try to do whatever they can. If they can't, USOL. Well. So, yeah. Uh, yes. And, uh, if you have money, you go to port au <laughs> With a book and go driving and that. Yeah. yeah. You see the world. You yeah. see the world. You drive it. Yeah. You see that. It's the world. Yeah. 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 So now what they're working on, the last part, they're working on it's a program. It's a program they want to sponsor somebody to go be a specialist, specialize in that, and they can come here for exactly. the year, right? Yeah. Be here all the time. Yeah, all Orthopedic the time. Orthopedic surgery. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. But you might need more than one of those guys. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, you, if you have one, that's, what, yeah. that's better than that. One's better than that. You realize why certain groups and, and communities um, want to help some of these places because they have nothing. So it's a, uh, they try to give them a, like a scholarship where they can spend about 30,000 yeah. yeah. euros. 30,000 euros. Uh, one dollar is so one dollar is something. Like so seven, seventy good is is a dollar. Is a yeah. dollar. Yeah. So. Yeah. Every time we come down here, we work with the Brothers Brother Foundation. Um, out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they donate medical supplies for free clinics and places in need. Uh, each year we deliver those medical supplies and we did the same thing this time. Um, we delivered some clothing there and some first aid kits. Dave and Linda brought some uh, first aid kits donated by Lidos, and that was fantastic. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Well, merci. It's always good to just make a little bit of a difference in the places where you can. We're not a medical charity, we're an education-based charity, but there is opportunity there for Trellis Arch to do more. So I'm really looking forward to uh, being able to do more work with the hospital and the orphanage there. That was a huge moving moment to be able to uh, see the the kids there. The kids at the orphanage were just fantastic and knowing that uh, Linda, who runs the orphanage, was an orphan there herself and now she's giving back. And that's exactly what I feel the need to do is, is to give back. That was a pretty intense, intense visit. But it was really necessary because I think that, you know, when you start seeing those kind of things, you realize the needs of places like this. And I think that those kind of other perspectives really help you and them see, okay, how can we move forward?
Every trip that we had to go through to get places, the payoff was so worth it. Uh, hey, boss. Hey. <laughs> uh, the village of Paulin, here just west of Port de Pay, we always pay some sort of a visit there. We go to the village. Curvins had mentioned that uh, they're having a local soccer tournament up there. He had purchased the jerseys for them, which is great. It was super cool, and all the kids were just very curious to see us there. The sun is setting, everyone's there, out on this beautiful pitch. You know, they, this place may have all those problems, but that was the most beautiful soccer field I've ever seen in my life, you know? It was a little crooked and they didn't have any nets, but like, I'd rather play soccer there than, you know, in some field in like the middle of Brooklyn, you know? The game went into penalty kicks, you know, like who could have ridden that? Amazing to see the excitement of the whole village getting together to watch this game. It might sound trite, but it's a reminder that you don't need much to uh, to enjoy life and get something out of life. <laughs> The thing that I most remember about that was at the end where uh, Linda was, she had quite a crowd around her and they, they just didn't want to quit. It was, it was a lot of fun. Just to be like slowly immersed in these local experiences was invaluable and it sort of builds up your understanding of the place. And I'm happy we had those experiences before we painted because um, you know, it made me care that much more about getting the mural right and making everyone like it and um, doing a good job and stuff like that for the people. I got a dog for So historically, Haitians are and have every reason to be apprehensive about people that show up with promises of assistance or help. I mean, historically, absolutely justified in questioning whatever it is you're bringing to the table. Who are you supporting for political office? Why are you doing this? There's always a, a historically in Haiti, a give and take. You come down here and you say you're gonna paint a school. Everyone has a different idea how that's going to make sense. And we bumped into that the first time we went to the school that we intended to paint the entire thing and go crazy. We had a little bit of a difficulty with uh, communication about our intent and what the purpose was. Ultimately, we broke through that, and Ramiro was able to paint a really cool bird on the inside of this one classroom. Painting at the schools was a, a really awesome experience. Um, I think more for the kids than for ourselves. really loud and there was like a hundred kids around you the whole time. Thank you. Thank you. It was just awesome to be in a community that hasn't really seen that kind of stuff and to do it for them.
Oh, you didn't watch this either? You gotta go. <laughs> Did you actually watch them? I've watched every single one of them. Where? Right over there. And then I just threw water all over myself. Next day, we roll into Tucson Loverture School and we do the Inside Out project in the hallway. And suddenly, these bare walls, these dirty old walls with pigeon poop on them and everything, suddenly are transformed into these welcoming faces of these French kids. The biggest, the biggest sacrifice I made coming here was uh, being willing to get anywhere near wallpaper or wallpaper paste. Uh, me and that kind of activity don't get along because it, it just never ends well. But uh, uh, <laughs> we toughed through the first one and we got uh, better and faster at it and it came out great. Today we are in Toussaint Louverture School. It's a primary school which will work and create bonds with the French school within the project Inside Out by GIA. We are here to share this idea that with good ideas we can change the world and as says GIA, turn the world inside out. With the photographs between the French and the Haitian kids, it's really to get them to start reflecting, introspecting on what it's like to be in another country. By education, by going to school, they will be able to support families and villages and to bring improvement in their daily life. I think the little things that we do down here have a huge impact, even spray painting a wall. So we, we always like to think everybody's got something to offer and they do. When you come down here to Haiti and put it to work, you see it happen. There are no murals here. I mean, the fact that they trusted us to do our own art in their place was pretty unbelievable. If you're having a bad day in Haiti and then you go to school, at least you can see some images that are really bright and really uplifting. We've got Romero who's painted this mural with these fish swimming, a school of fish into the school. You've got Denton's amazing image of Toussaint Louverture, the, the school's namesake, with a collaboration with JPO, drawing the colors up the wall. I mean, it, it transformed that place in a day and a half. You know, you see uh, the conditions in the country, and a lot of them aren't very pretty. And you sort of say, how can anybody help? Where can anybody start? Here's a way that we can help, and that we can start, and we can help future generations. So I just, I don't know, I just told him there's a little twig here, it won't do nothing to this ball. Yeah, it's a strong ball. All right, you can run a car over it. Well, bye, 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 all right. Lots right, of bandages, right. aspirin. Okay. Now, what do you think? Are you asking about both? Don't ever think you can't make a difference. Each of us has a talent, and each of us can share it and change the life of one child.
amazing just to see everybody, even the teachers, and I believe the principal's eyes light up and they saw it for the first time. They just seemed to be so excited about what was going on that they wanted to be right on top of it. Their eyes are just so bright. Their smiles are so big. And you think, man, that could teach us a lesson. a lot of stuff that had to do with the school and their school motto, the school name. I wanted to really put up something that was kind of funny and kind of playful for them. about the kids in the school that uh, most of them were just so cheerful and happy and a big smile and melt your heart. I've learned that when you go to places like this and you go back to the States and you talk to people that have never seen anything like this, you can't really make them understand. Um, and you know, you can like see this stuff on television or whatever, but it's not the same thing. We had been here a couple of days and, we, and when we drove seven hours to Port of Pei, um, Charlie, one of the guys on the trip, um, was in the back of the car and he hadn't said much in a while and was just kind of looking out the window. And then he said, every high schooler in America should come here for a week. And it's true. Um, I think that, you know, it won't happen. <laughs> but it's really, really true. It changes your perspective so much. Um, it shows you how you really, you know, don't need all of the excess that we have to be happy and to live. We're all human beings. And their plight, the things that they have to deal with and try to overcome are only theirs because of where they're born. They could be mine, they could be yours, they could be anyone's. And so it's our responsibility as human beings to share the burden, you know, to share our blessings. <clears throat> So our work in Haiti right now is focused on 40 kids. We have 40 sponsored children that are the poorest of the poor. And for $20 a month, sponsors can send them to school. It provides their tuition, their backpacks, their school supplies, everything they need. Most kids in Haiti don't go beyond the fifth grade, and that's sad. And so we're just doing a small, small piece, trying to make a difference one child at a time. As we grow as an organization, we intend ultimately to build a school down here 
to pay teachers. So we, we create jobs and then have free tuition for the school. Much larger operation, that's the vision, you know, five, 10 years from now. But, you know, in the interim, if you're interested, check out our website, trellisarch.org. And I'm always happy to answer any questions about our work here in Haiti, Uganda, India, Nepal, and back in the DC area. To have been sort of indoctrinated into this opportunity of an organization that is doing a good thing that now I've seen and now I trust. I know that I can't fix all the problems of the world, but now I'm a part of something where I can make a difference. And that's a really cool feeling. I had a positive experience here. Um, and I think Trellis Arch is doing awesome stuff. We're, we're strangers and we get, we get here and you know we're automatically family. And that's how I felt um, right off the plane. And that's amazing. Thank you, Dave and uh, Lydia. And uh, like I said, everybody including you, Brad, for doing such a great job. When people don't have these kinds of experiences, it's, it's difficult to, to be able to verbally explain and emotionally explain everything that's happened. Even when you see them in movies and TV shows and all that stuff, it's, unless you live it, it's really difficult. So I would just hope that people are more open-minded to coming to countries like this and doing work. I'm so ready to make this what I do for the rest of my life. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Pierre Seska Marie Edli. Hi. Hmm? Oh, oh, and you're sponsored by Kim Hyatt. So. <laughs> hey, Kim, we're here in Haiti. Yeah, Webster. Thank you. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Jack Jonathan Webster. Busy. And Raymond Bentley is your sponsor. Yay, all right, cool. Shanika. Bonjour, moi je m'appelle Saint Amadji. Shanika. Uh, the Coin Family is uh, sponsors. Uh, so it's my family. Yep. Oh, Bonsoir. yeah. Bonsoir. Cool. Nicholson. Yeah. And also sponsored by the Coin Family. So thank you. Yeah. Carl Edward. Yeah. Bonsoir. Je suis Kade And uh, you're sponsored by Mary Crawford Moresca. Hey, Mary. We're here in Haiti. Yay. I know Bonsoir. this too. Bonsoir. Je m'appelle Lenny Nicholson. Yeah. I can't hear. Yeah. 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 Je m'appelle Remy McKenzie. Remy McKenzie. Remy McKenzie, yeah, and also sponsored by Mary Crawford Moresca. Thank you, Mary. S'il vous plaît, chérie, date moi par les fois. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Pierre Maléa. And sponsored by Boston. Oh, Cerise Boston is your sponsor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Shanika. Bush. <laughs> Alexandino. Alexandino, I know him. Bonjour, je m'appelle Pete Alexandino. And Alex is uh, Alexandino is sponsored by David Taylor. Jenica. Bonsoir, je suis Sefer Jenica. Jenica. And Bye. sponsored by Jonah Smith. Bonjour, je m'appelle Justin Estelle. Esther. Oh, yeah, Raymond Bentley also sponsors Esther Ryan. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to buy the before I said, Lonica. Buy the before his alley. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. We will find one. Yeah, yeah. For the valley before she. Did you repeat this one? Excellent. Okay. With no sponsor. And last guy. Bonjour, je m'appelle Axis Lourdes Mugaski. Okay. Oh. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. So these are our uh, sponsor kids. Some of our sponsor kids. Some of them need sponsors. So I challenge you. Go out and help your neighbor. You know. Help your neighbor's neighbor. Help the country next door. But do it in kindness and do it in love 
and do it in sincerity and you will be overwhelmed at what it does to your own life.